to It's In The Box by White Acre Studio. I'm Cynthia and I am in the studio finally after a long winter. I made it up here today. Ironically, it snowed yesterday. We had what we call an onion snow, which is the spring snow, um, but I was able to get here and it's good to be back. What you have in your box today is everything you need to make a soy wax container candle. And I have bought quite a few of these in my time, so this is really exciting to be making one of my own. So when you open your box, you're gonna find that you have two containers, you have two essential oils, and you have enough soy wax to make those two candles. And then you have what you need to get everything to the right temperature, which is, I believe, a candy thermometer. And you have your two wicks and a way to adhere those wicks to the bottom of the container. So when you open this little doodad bag, you have stickies that when you peel them are gonna go on the bottom of your wick to fix it into the container. And then you also have um, what looks like a guide, which when you lay across your container, if you can see this, allows you to keep your wick upright while it is becoming wax again. So one of the tips for this is time. You need to allow time once you have poured to actually let your candle become a candle. And when you look at your directions and they're excellent, you're gonna see that it recommends how long you should wait before you try to put a lid on it and, or use it, whatever. So there's step-by-step -step guides here, but primarily what we're doing is melting the soy wax in a container. The suggestion is that we use a microwave. That's the way I've been doing it. There is another way to do it, which would be a double boiler. And if you've ever made candy, you've used one of those. But if you have a microwave, I really think this is the easy peasy way to go. Um, and I'm gonna reverse my order a tiny bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my wicks into my container, my wick into my container, so that when I go to microwave, you don't have to watch me do that because it's actually in the microwave for a couple minutes. So I'm gonna get one of my stickies. Look at that, static, it's flying, look at that. That's very cool. Anyway, you're gonna put your sticky on the bottom of your wick. And then when you look into your container, you'll be able to see exactly where it goes because there's an indentation. So there's, this is a no brainer. And once your wick is in, you really are ready to start dealing with your wax. This is going to come into play after you have poured your wax. So you have two pieces of kitchen equipment that ultimately, when this project is all done, can get cleaned up and used in your kitchen. This is a cool thing to have. All right, um, your wax is in a bag. It should say it's in the bag. It says it's in the box. Um, and it's enough for two candles. So what I have found is that when you're pouring into your melting container, um, to get about half of it, you can eyeball it or you can, sorry for the noise, you can just measure that one candle is going to be about two cups and it, it is shaved there we go that i might be taking a little bit of that out i think i will um it's shaved and easy to work with and not a big blob of anything and if you are a candle person you know that most of the high-end candles now have transitioned from paraffin to soy because soy is smokeless and it really is better for the environment. So most of the time when I'm shopping in a boutique for a candle, it advertises that it is soy. Um, obviously people still make candles out of paraffin, but we wouldn't want to put that in um, a microwave. So this is not only environmentally sound but this is the safe way to go so there's my wax my wick is in i'm going to pause for a minute i'm going to go have a meltdown in the microwave and then we'll be back to pour 
and I'm back. I found that even though your instructions say five minutes to melt, you're gonna to want to look at your microwave and its temperatures, they're all different. So this was through experimentation, um, I found four minutes was about right for my microwave. Um, I'm gonna use my thermometer, I'm gonna clip it on And you want to keep in mind that, you know, the melting of the wax isn't the only issue. It has to get to a certain temperature for all of this to be effective. So I'm going to look and see where I am. I'm going to be watching it rise. And ultimately, we're aiming to get to 185. So when you put it in, if it's above that, you're going to be um, waiting for it to cool down. Um, you can use your stick to stir to cool it down. Um, you're going to take it to a different temperature when you add your essential oil. So I want to talk a minute about the oils. I love essential oils. I actually use them on a diffuser bracelet so that I can sniff them all the live long day. And you're going to get two different essential oils. And you're going to find that some of them are what I call the kitchen flavors. You know, anything from apple harvest to one that I found that I love, which was banana nut bread. And then there's the more, um, what I would call incense -y kind of fragrances, the kind that you um, might be used to like bamboo or amber. Um, and I chose today bamboo with coconut and I'm gonna be using that essential oil when this is at the temperature I want it to be. So just putting the thermometer in straight from the microwave, I am at 250 degrees so i have to wait for this to come down so i'm going to use my stick and stir i might ultimately pause to get it to the temperature we want so that you're not watching me stir a pot but um you you want to stir um, when you put your oil in, whether it's the right temperature or not, and we'll talk about that. So right now I'm stirring to cool, we'll pause, and I'll be right back. And we are ready. We have reached the 185, so I can take this off for a moment. I will need it again when I put my essential oil in. So I have chosen for today bamboo and coconut. Oh, yum. I mean, don't eat it, but oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, and that's the other thing. This is really hot. So you need to have a hot pad or some dish towel or something carrying your containers. And you want to be very, very careful when you do. All right, use your handle when you lift. And I'm putting in my oil. You're using the whole dang bottle. And then you are stirring for about two minutes because that is diffusing all of your oil through your wax. So don't wimp out on the stirring. And while we are stirring, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about options that you might have. So you can make two container candles with a lid or you can get creative. I was thinking about the fact that so many of these essential oil flavors, essences, are kitcheny. So I had thought like there's one that's apricot, there's one that's banana nut bread. Depending on what you get, you might have empty jam jars at home. I know I always say those things. You could use as much of your wax as you need to fill one of these. So ultimately, where's my other wick? I don't see it, there it is. Ultimately, your wick would work in a, in a jar this size. Or if you have a little tiny mason jar, because I have some of those. Very nice, I like it. All right, um, it really is a mystery. You're not gonna know until you open your bottle what you're really dealing with. Um, this is very, 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 very nice. All right, so I've been stirring for a fair amount of time and I'm gonna take this stick out and I'm gonna reinsert my candy thermometer because my goal is to get the temp down. I believe it's 135 now. So, um, yes, I have, a, I have some degrees to come down. So we'll pause for a moment and when I come back, we'll be pouring. 
and we are ready to pour. I just want to point out that while you weren't actually watching it, it really is a process of letting it cool. So between the first cool down, when you add the oil and the second cool down, when you got to get to 135, that was probably a solid 10 minutes of stirring and cooling. So just so you know where you're headed with that. Um, and you will find when you look into your container that there's a lip that you can see where you want to aim um, to end and you're holding your wick up um, and if you have more wax than um, goes to the lip you can at least take it to the top there we go I don't think I want to go higher than that and then you're going to use who knew this existed I obviously did not Remember your wick is adhered to the bottom, okay? So you can pull it taut. So you really do want your wick to be straight. And voila, we have a candle. And honestly, once you've done this, I, I think you're not going to want to be buying candles anymore. You're going to want to make them because um, there's so many oils to choose from, all right? So... Well, now you have to wait, all right? You're gonna wait overnight for this to harden and get like this. And then once you have let it sit, you're ready to just trim your wick to about a quarter of an inch. And then ultimately, you're supposed to put your lid on and let those oils stew a little bit in the soy and you're supposed to wait two weeks. Good luck with that at least wait 72 hours before you pop that lid and light your candle. It's not the soy that you're worried about, you're, it's the oil. You want the oil to really get in there, but this is what you have. It's delightful. And thank you for joining me and the microwave. I'm Cynthia and this is It's in the Box. Mm -hmm.